Tony here at ZKM. Uh, you are, your project is part of the exhibition Infosphere and the title is Garden of Ritual Kinship. Can you explain this title of your work? Yes, um, it's actually part of a larger series of work called Reversal of Fortune. And what that's looking at are new economies, socially uh, enabled uh, finance, and the intersection of um, philanthropy um, and just sort of general economics and how the three come together. And so this reversal of fortune is looking at how, um, in terms of philanthropy, how people from the West more fluent are sending money into developing and emerging um, countries and areas. So Garden of Virtual Kinship, I should say, is uh, an homage to Ken Goldberg's Telegarden from um, the early 1990s, where he created the first um, uh, kind of interactive online experience where there was a, a physical garden in uh, the university uh, in California, and people, for the first time, you know, in the 90s, had a web browser where they could take care of the plant. And so it, it kind of uh, extends that idea um, and this notion of um, virtual kinship is kind of more with in, uh, internet culture that we sort of feel intimate in knowing somebody um, almost like a kin through uh, these mediated experiences, right? These virtual experiences of um, the internet. Why are you so much interested in this m notion of garden? in connection with the internet or what is the interconnection of both? Well, I, I, well first of all, it, it's a data visualization. And I think that, um, you know, we're so inundated with so much data and data visualizations are so streamlined and clean. And I liked the idea of bringing in plants and, you know, a garden that is much more unpredictable, that's going to get messy and that you can't really control in this predictable way, like they try to sort of control data. So you work a lot with this contradiction of the rational and the what is not predictable. Um, yeah, yeah, looking, well, the, the whole thing is, um, right, the technology and um, taking the, the data that is, you know, coming from all over the world. So um, we sort of have the cultural mixed in kind of with the organic. And right, those kind of dichotomies I was really interested in. Most of the earlier work that I've done is always dealing a little bit with um, telematics, telepresence, um, usually where, um, like looking at uh, crowdsourcing, and now this project is more crowdfunding of how you have a geographically dispersed group of people, everybody all over the world, that's able to kind of log on and affect something in another place. Mm -hmm. Can you explain more this uh, emergent technology of crowdfunding? Why did you choose it for your work? Um, well, I was doing uh, some collaborative projects earlier on with crowdsourcing. Um, I've always really been interested in labor issues and how labor um, has been impacted by technology and um, with computers, kind of the advent of, of, of digital labor and a lot of uh, uh, writing about digital labor has um, appeared over the past, you know, like 10 years. And um, I just like the idea of what I was saying that you could pull together a crowd um, to perform a task as in crowd sourcing and looking at how it was going in a way um, our needs were being met uh, telematically from the developing world with crowd sourcing. Um, where you have these new markets of labor in developing emerging countries, whereas with crowdfunding, in the situation that I'm looking at it, is that we're sort of giving money now to people in developing countries. It's almost like a reversal of the crowdsourcing so that they can become their own kind of entrepreneurs. What are the challenges of this new uh, market of labor? Well. I mean, I think, I think with earlier work, you know, the problem of digital labor with everybody working online is that there's no um, labor regulations. Uh, and there's been a lot of groups, uh, especially like with um, 
online labor job engines, Mechanical Turk, where Mechanical Turk workers are anonymous, uh, where they have um, trying to sort of form these kind of virtual unions against um, online exploitation uh, because they're not paid a lot of money. And I think what I'm looking at with this project, Garden of Virtual Kinship, is micro lending, but more specifically with micro lending, microfinance. And so you're looking at people in these developing countries that are receiving money to become entrepreneurs for small kind of business goals. Most of them are the rural poor, but they're paying huge interest fees of anywhere from 25 to 65 percent, sometimes more. So if you have somebody who, you know, is asking for 300 euro to buy a pig for their farm and they're paying like 75 euro in, you know, in interest fees, that's, that's exploitation. Mm -hmm. So what the project tries to do is to make these exchanges, this kind of these new economic circuits more visible by showing like in one tank is the money as water that the plants, the loan borrowers were only getting a little bit through the dripping, but most of the water is going to this other tank, which are these interest and fees. Because I think the people that are lending through social media have good intentions, but this kind of economic model of microfinance, um, you know, has been around for a lot longer, like over 30 years, and, and it has a lot of problems. Um, so just to make aware of one, there is still this kind of micro lending happening. It is interesting that there's a huge, you know, global pool of people, predominantly from Western countries, a lot with the particular social media platform I'm looking at because it was started in the US, but that they're able to sort of impact through funding um, these people in other countries. Whether they get over indebted because they're paying so much interest, you know, that happens too. How do you make an artwork out of this uh, mm -hmm. really global mm -hmm. uh, issues? I mean, a lot of times it's more there's certain issues that I'm really interested in and certain forms or mediums. And um, I have always liked to do work where you're mixing the real physical world with the virtual world. And so it just seemed like, like in one of the earlier works about crowdsourcing, um, we had a designer gene factory and you ordered the genes um, online, but then they you watched the virtual workers, this was in Second Life, um, in 2008, 2009, and then these physical genes come out and you could wear them. So it's kind of performative, it's kind of playful, but it sort of mimics a real world experience of like shopping. But we see that the process of shopping is different. And so I really wanted to kind of push the real virtual and it just seemed like to have plants and like a garden that's really being maintained from this, you know, group of people online that are giving money um, seemed to underscore that relationship. Um, and there, there were different versions of this garden. You know, one was just sort of figuring out what's, how do you dynamically how do you create a dynamic system that could water all these plants? And an earlier system, you know, there were just all these hoses and you, it, it was, just, was just like a mess of hoses. And um, the second version I worked on with an artist, Brian Clark, and we came up with the idea, oh, like a CNC machine, then it could just more dynamically water the plants and the world map could be this matrix. And then you just have all the seeds in little, in dirt in the matrix. Perhaps the role of the artist shifts, doesn't it? You have to work much more like a sci or as a scientist and not like an artist painting something. Well, I've never, I mean, I did, I did paintings <laughs> when I was a lot younger, um, but I've always been doing sort of more sculptural found object type of work. Um, and I just, I just find technology based work the most interesting. Um, I like paintings, but to me, it just, everything is, the world we live in is, is, is all techno, you know, 
technology, you know, everything, smart kitchens, smart this, the Google, you know, driverless cars, and it just seems if you want to make some kind of cultural critique that you need to use the medium of the day and, and what kind of almost the pop medium, popular formats, which is why we use Second Life um, when it was popular. And, you know, the CNC machines, people are used to them from their printers, right? Your little home printer is that going back and forth. So, I mean, I think though, I, I mean, I've been working kind of in a more interdisciplinary way that there's, um, like in this garden project, I mean, it's about economics, it's about sociology, um, there is kind of a biological because of the plants, um, so important to talk to lots of different people and you know, I always have to work with people that are better technologists than I am to pull it all together. So there's no longer one author, one artist creating his artwork, but several people. I mean, to well, it depends on the project, I think, um, because a lot of times I do kind of have an idea of what the piece is about and how it should work and Maybe I talk to different people on how to refine the actual functionality, but um, I think in earlier works it was more of mutual collaborations where I feel like in this one it's been a little bit more of me kind of knowing what I want and figuring out how to refine it. But I always will, you know, talk to people that are working on, let's say, um, poverty studies because this is about, you know, economics and the global poor. Um, or go to somebody and find out, okay, what are the best plants or, you know, for these little tiny containers and what might be a better functioning system. So, I mean, there, I don't know, I think the authorship is really tricky. It's, it's, it's tricky to really kind of figure out a lot of times. Because, I mean, you might meet with a friend and just talking about your idea and they have this brilliant idea for your project in a 10 minute conversation, are they a collaborator? I don't know. It depends on the definition. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, <laughs> Stephanie, for being here at ZKM. You're Thank welcome. You. <laughs>